goal is to understand how black holes function and to um, then extend these mechanisms beyond black holes um, in different systems. Um, and hopefully can, we can do some quantum computing with those. I mean, black holes are really uh, extremely interesting objects from the, because they, they are es essentially most compact uh, storers of uh, quantum information. Uh, with my very rough estimate, the black hole of a capacity of human brain is, has the size of 10 to minus 27 centimeters. And um, so that's very compact. And here are uh, certain uh, mysteries for black holes, uh, or black hole mysteries, um, some standard considered for, for many years. Um, the first is that they, they, they are microstate entropy, which is the measure of uh, the amount of quantum information that black hole can carry. Uh, is, uh, which, uh, and black hole saturate also so-called Bekenstein bound on, on, on this information, on its entropy. Uh, scales like area in units of Newton's constant or the Planck scale. Uh, semi-classically, they carry information horizon. You cannot extract information from, from a semi-classical black hole. No information comes out ever. Um, uh, in the same regime, it evaporates. Evaporates with the, with the thermal spectrum with temperature inverse R. And um, so the, you have to go beyond semi-classical regime in order to extract information. And the information and the start of the information recovery time is given by this so-called pages time. It's proportional to the entropy. It's a macroscopic time scale, okay? Um, so the question is, the, the question that I tried to ask a few years ago is, how special are, are black holes? And in a sense, this, this is an obvious question to be asked, but by some reason was not really asked, at least not in this way. And uh, the results are pretty, 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 pretty shocking, in fact. So now, in order to compare black hole with other objects, of course, the objects must be also the, the storers of quantum information, the efficient storers of quantum information. And, that, so, and the question is, okay, suppose you have a quantum field theory, okay, with certain uh, quantum coupling al alpha, so you have this quantum field theory has certain degrees of freedom, so you have a coupling alpha, and uh, you have an object in this theory or a system of certain size r radius. And you can ask this question, what's the uh, absolute bound on the quantum information, amount of quantum information that this uh, system can store? Or um, on the bound on the microstate entropy? Why simply logarithm from the degenerate microstates? Um, all states pure. No, no. And so the, the bound turns out to be the inverse of the coupling. Of course, coupling runs in quantum field theory, so you have to evaluate, evaluate the coupling at the scale r. Um, equivalently, the this, this same bound is simultaneously the area of an object in the units of Goldstone coupling. Uh, now, the Goldstone is the Goldstone, well, there are several Goldstones usually, but the gold, universal one is the Goldstone of spontaneously broken Poincare symmetry, because any object uh, computer, whatever it is, always breaks spontaneously Poincare symmetry. And so basically you cannot store more information in your computer other than the area of the computer divided by the Poincare Goldstone. And this is universal. Uh, the, this is QFT bound on information. And of course this is interesting because this looks like exactly like uh, area, area log of a black hole, which is, it is actually. Okay, so Goldstone coupling, F is the Goldstone scale. Okay, and uh, so it turns out that there, there is a class of objects, actually almost infinite uh, number of those objects, uh, that saturate this bound, and we call them saturons. And by now we have a long list of these examples of, of saturons in many different theories. Now, the cool thing is that uh, they appear in theories that, that have nothing to do with gravity, calculable, renormalizable quantum field theories, some of those are even exactly solvable. Okay, so in this way you can bypass all the complications coming from quantum gravity or, or, or lack of knowledge and just work with them. Okay, 
Now, what it turned out that actually, once you have a saturated system, once you have a saturon, it also exhibits all these other properties of a black hole. So they, semi-classically, they have information horizon. You cannot extract information from them. They decay with the rate um, close to thermal, uh, with inverse radius again. And the time scale for the start of information retrieval is given by the exactly same expression as the time scale for, for a black hole. Okay? This is extremely, of course, this is extremely interesting. And um, obviously, I cannot go through all the examples, but let me just illustrate on one particular example. And then I will go to normal. So, the way I'm structuring the talk, I give you a relativistic example and then non -relativistic, non relativistic case, how to work in tabletop labs, hopefully, with this type of systems. Okay? So, the, um, for example, the example here is, the, is a theory with uh, spontaneously broken SUN symmetry, global symmetry, a large N, so of a single field. Um, you can choose this field to be in a joint representation, okay, for definiteness. So it's an adjoint representation, the field. And this theory has degenerate vacuum states, okay? So it has vacuum at, with unbroken symmetry and the vacuum with spontaneously broken SUN symmetry. Okay. Now, unitarity the, of the theory, validity, requires that alpha is, alpha is 1 over m, okay? Maximum, okay? Small. And, um, this translates as the bound on, on information storage capacity of these objects. So, um, because they, the theory has degenerate vacuum, it also has the bubble solutions of the vacuum. So, this is a bubble embedded in an unbroken symmetry vacuum, a bro broken symmetry bubble. Okay, so imagine you are an observer that is observing this bubble. So, in the, in the interior, the global symmetry is broken spontaneously. So, you have over the rain goldstone modes that live in the interior. These goldstone modes are gapless, and correspondingly, this bubble has enormous microstate entropy, and it can, it can store enormous information. And so, the, this is the way we, we proceed. We construct a bubble solution, and then we, uh, we saturate it. And then, then we'll see what happens. And then, indeed, it exhibits all these properties that black hole has. Moreover, there is something interesting, a new sort of <laughs> interesting aspect emerging which we call memory burden effect. And so what is the point? The point is the following. So you can form a bubble that is so saturated. So this bubble has enormous entropy. It means that it has potential to store uh, maximal quantum information. But you may not use this potential, right? So it's like a hard disk. You have a hard disk. You may uh, upload some file there, or you, you don't. And if the bubble is empty, if the information pattern that the bubble carries is empty, bubble is always oscillatory. It's still, it's, it's, it is a still saturated bubble, but it's oscillatory. But when information pattern is full, actually that makes bubble stationary. We call this memory burden effect, okay? So here, you can see this uh, explicitly. So, the information is stored in goldstone modes. So here is the case when ghost, the information pattern is there, and then the critical information pattern stabilizes. Uh, not stabilizes, but makes it stationary. And here it's oscillatory, okay? So here is another story with um, uh, the same. Yeah. The, uh, the profile of the field, the, the profile. No, profile is what tells you the, the, the configuration of the bubble. Now, the profile of the radial mode is the, what, what sets the, 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 the framework for the bubble. And the profile supports existence of the goldstone modes. And when goldstone modes, here, right? Here, so when the goldstone, so the goldstone modes, and the goldstone modes, they, so this is the profile function, okay? But then, internally in the isospace, the, the bubble, depending whether it carries information pattern or not, goldstones are time dependent or not. So that's what get, back reacts and, and, stabilize, and, and changes the behavior of the profile function. Okay? On the, left or the, right? the same thing. It's the, on the left is the bubble with empty information pattern. 
on the right, it's a bubble with full information pattern. They, they are both saturated bubbles. They both carry maximal entropy. Maximal entropy, but you may or may not use this, uh, this ability, right? It's like a computer. If you, if you may load it or not, and so the, the, the behavior changes, okay? And so it, here is the same thing. So again, so this oscillation goes, goes forever, and here, as you can see, it's, 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 it's mild. And you can evaluate the, the, the bubble mic microstates. It's, it's completely straightforward to evaluate it. It's basically the entropy, as you can see, it, it, not surprisingly, is maximum. At this maximum, it, is, it scales like n. And then when, when bubble saturates unitarity, so you get this bound. So uh, now, it has other properties of a black hole. For example, information horizon, right, as I said, in the semi-classical limit. So in the semi-classical limit, I mean, we're making a big deal out of black hole, the fact that black hole doesn't reveal information. But this is exactly what is happening here. The, so black hole doesn't reveal information in semi-classical limit. Now, what is semi-classical limit is when you take the fixed radius of an object, you take the coupling to zero, simultaneously you, you keep this collective coupling uh, finite. So in, of course, in this limit, F, which is analog of the Planck scale, which is exactly what's happening for black holes, goes to infinity, and so on. And in, the, in this limit, the saturon, just like a black hole, possesses a strict uh, information horizon. There's no way to extract information from the interior. For example, here, I'm, I'm giving an example. So information is encoded in, gold, in Goldstone modes, right? And for example, you can perturb this information interior by this perturbation. So you, you can see what, it, so this is basically you are making excitation in the Goldstone field, okay? And um, so the colors are angles, right? And as you can see, not surprisingly, the information is not coming out. So it, it stays internally. So the Goldstone information bounces back and forth through the Goldstone mode, it's not coming out. You have to go beyond semi-classics in order to extract information. Yeah, there are other features, like for example, here there's a merger and so on. Um, so literally, you can translate everything that black hole does to this saturon state. Now again, so here's a full quantum computation of the evaporation of the, of the saturon. So saturon evaporates, continues to evaporate even in semi-classical limit, okay? But as you can see, so pi, pi denotes an outgoing, uh, outgoing particle. And as you can see, the information is carried by one over n effects of this uh, process, okay? And so one over n or one over s effects. And correspondingly, the information retrieval time, the start of the information retrieval, not the complete retrieval, but the beginning of information retrieval, indeed, immediately you can see in quantum field, uh, quantum field theory language why the information retrieval time has to scale, uh, it has to be proportional to the entropy, okay? Because of one over s, s corrections. And uh, so, yeah, it just reproduces the same thing as, as for black holes. And so basically we have a complete correspondence between, uh, between saturons and black holes. So he, here's the, the fact, okay? I'm, I'm not doing any speculation, I'm just saying. It turns out that there are huge number, or probably infinite number, of saturons, saturated states, in non-gravitational theories. And they, they carry all the features that usually we're considering to be mysterious features for black holes, one to one. So black hole is like a black box. You don't know how it works. But here you have other things that behave in the same way, and there you know how they work. And of course, it makes sense to say, oh, no, this means that something similar should be happening in black holes, OK? If you, you know, try to use it as a guideline. Now, let me now go to um, uh, in non-relativistic systems. Because also, why saturons are interesting? Because they have non-relativistic counterparts. This and those non-relativistic counterparts, potentially, you can produce in laboratory those, okay? And uh, originally, actually, this started way before, because we had an idea, we have a theory, uh, my collaborator, Cesar Gomez, and I, to de uh, describe a black hole, which I'm not presenting here in this talk, that's not important, but uh, historically, that's how it happened, so that we were describing black hole as a, 
con both Einstein condensate of gravitons, high occupation number of gravitons, at criticality. And, uh, and our idea, uh, and saturation. And our idea was that actually that's what matters for black hole properties. And if that's what matters for black hole properties, then other critical systems should exhibit similar behavior. That was our idea. So, and then we started exploring no relativistic bosonic systems and Bose Einstein condensates at criticality. And then we had this idea to use them for quantum information storage and, and so on, okay? So this was done before even this, uh, satur this saturation story. And, and so, for example, here's a simple no relativistic system, okay? The, these are bosons. Psi is a number operator field. It's a no relativistic QFT um, on a ring or, or in a box, uh, you, you can decide. And um, so you can rewrite Hamiltonian in terms of creation and annihilation operators. Now, Psi can transform under certain symmetries. I'm not making that explicit. Uh, so you have creation and annihilation operators. And this system has a critical state because the, the bosons are attractive, that's why, okay? I mean, uh, the, 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 this, the, this, for example, in D equals one with repulsion, this is so-called lib linear model and also with inverse size. People were considering this, this system for, for, for other purposes, okay? Um, but we, we are specifically interested in, in criticality and, and, and the black hole type properties. And so this system has a critical state. Uh, so the critical state usually is this. Let me tell you what the critical states usually are in these systems. So what happens is that there is certain modes that are macroscopically occupied. And what happens if system is saturated or critical, there is certain occupation, critical occupation number of those modes, usually given by this inverse coupling, okay? Not usually, always given by inverse coupling. When all of a sudden at that point, huge number of other modes become gapless. So those other modes, normally they are not gapless in the vacuum. So you may not notice them, but they are gap, become gapless at very, that very special point. And uh, so for example, here you can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can trace it very, very easily. So you can do Bogolubo transformation, you can do, so this is a, we call it a master mode, the one that is occupied, highly occupied. You do Bogolubo approximation and then Bogolubo transformation and Bogolubo Hamiltonian. And you can see that modes are indeed becoming gapless. There is a emerge, bunch of emerging gapless modes at criticality. And this is a very nice system to, to, to analyze because essentially this system uh, essentially is, 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 is solvable, okay? And uh, for example, one of the things we did the, the long ago was this so-called uh, scrambling story. So there was this proposal by Hayden and Preskill that black holes uh, scramble information uh, at very fast. So there are fast scrambles and logarithmic time. But was not really made very clear what, first, how, what precisely scrambling is, and also uh, what's the coefficient of this uh, logarithm, okay? And so in this system, what we showed is that this system in overcritical regime is a fast scrambler. Indeed, it scrambles with this time scale. Uh, and what stands in front is the Lyapunov exponent. So basically, this is the point. And this is exactly what you expect for black holes. You expect for black holes that if, for example, you take a black hole, you perturb it, let's say induce some quasi-normal mode, or you throw a stone, you perturb it, then you create Lyapunov exponent. And that's, the, that's, that's what scrambles the information that you throw in in this logarithmic time scale. Now, it's very nice because here there is this, um, I mean, this is very this exact in this computation. So this is, these are exact results, uh, dependence on, this, on, on, the, on the scrambling time. So now, what does it mean scrambling here? Scrambling means very fast generation of entanglement. Okay, so this is what is happening. You have Lyapunov exponent, you have very high density of states, and the system can diversify and become maximally entangled over, over logarithmic time, okay? Now, for example, so in this, it's pretty generic, it, it turns out, that whenever you have bosonic systems with different signs of interaction, attraction, especially attraction, even, even you don't even need peri periodic boundary conditions, you can have in the box, so you can always find these states of enhanced uh, information storage capacity, in other words, the critical states where the gapless modes emerge. Okay, you can always find those. So here, for example, I'm describing done in this work, 
um, um, so for, for non-periodic box, okay? The same system in non-periodic box. And you can see that there are certain critical states around which if you are far from the criticality, the mods are, have a high gap. So they, they, this is the time evolution of mods. Of, of, no, so it's pre pretty high frequency. And then, then you move towards, sorry. Then you move towards criticality. You see that the frequency goes down. And at some point, frequency becomes one over n. And this is the neighborhood of this critical state, okay? So basically, if you think in terms of profile, this is what's happening. You don't, you don't, you know, you don't have any uh, flat direction in the, in, the, in the energy space, and then this flat direction appears. If you go farther, it again disappears, okay? So this here, these are the, this is the rainbow of the microstates ar around this critical state, okay? Okay, this is a 3D picture of this. I still have like three minutes, right? Yeah, okay. So let me then um, in go to the following thing. Why saturation? So I, I'm, I'm trying to tell you why is saturation important for as a generic phenomenon, okay? For the uh, generic, for QFT, and it has many other applications. That's why it would be very important to study this in laboratory. For example, one important thing that comes with saturation is unitarization of the scattering amplitudes. This is a highly QFT phenomena because if you have a saturated system, saturated state in your system, then in the scattering process or time evolution process with right kinematic variables, it always dominates the final state. Why? Because it's the maximal and most, most highest degeneracy state, highest entropy state. For example, let me give you an example. We think, and this is, this is a generic idea which is essentially commonly accepted, that very high energy scattering in, in, in gravity, transplanckian, I mean very high energy, I mean with center of mass way larger than Planckian, is actually uh, unitarized by black holes. That's, that's what's happening because, and the arguments are excellent and there is a, a, lot, a lot of work done in that direction. So basically if you do very high energy scattering, the end result of very high energy scattering is the, is the black hole, okay? I mean, intermediate and, and result, then the end result. Then, of course, the black hole is going to evaporate, yeah. So that's why, for example, at LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, we were expecting, we still are expecting production of black holes if, 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 if theory satisfies certain, certain assumptions, then black holes can be produced in the high energy collisions, okay? And um, so, now, and contrary, the opposite. If the system is undersaturated, then you may get some surprises. So what happens with undersaturated system is that some, sometimes things that look obvious do not happen. And the, and the good example is the erasure of defects. Because erasure of defects happens when defects of different dimensionality, they come in contact. And so whenever, so usually defects, they ha carry some confined flux, okay? Or some confined charge. And then uh, when they encounter a bigger de defect, which can support the same uh, deconfine the, the flux, so the, the, the defect gets erased. For example, if magnetic monopole meets a domain wall, uh, what happens is the magnetic charge spreads over the wall and the defect uh, gets erased, okay? And um, so here, for example, in this, uh, with Juan Sebastian uh, simulation, so here there is an encounter of, the, of a vortex with the domain wall. So vortex has flux. You can think of it as a vortex. You can also think it as one dimensional. Now the great thing about this is that it covers huge number of phenomena. So it covers, for example, interaction between QCD string and the confined layer, QCD string and axionic domain wall, fundamental string and the deep brain, and so on. So this is a huge, uh, and you can also do this experiment in uh, condensed, ma condensed matter labs with abricoso vortices, for example, okay? And now the point is, surprising part is what? Because now you could think, okay, vortex can go through and materialize on the other side. Why not? There is no conservation law that, that prevents it. Energy is fine. It never happens. Precisely because vortex is usually undersaturated. So if vortex is undersaturated, this never happens. For saturated vortex, always goes through, okay? So that's the, the difference. And uh, similar thing for monopole and domain wall. You can observe it here. And the same thing is happening, actually, I'm almost done. 
So the same thing is happening. Another important example of this is monopoles connected by string, okay? Now, monopoles connected by string are important because they are important for cosmology. Mon monopoles in cosmology are a big deal. Uh, they, because of different applications, of gravitational waves, etc. But also, this is a model for the QCD string, analog of QCD string, uh, uh, confining heavy quarks, okay? And uh, so, the, the monopoles, uh, again, the same happens, that the undersaturated monopole pair N never even oscillates. This goes in contrast to what people thought, because now you can think if you have monopole connected by string, they should oscillate like, you know, along, uh, and, but they don't. They immediately dissipate the entire energy into radiation. And of course, this is very important. So this is, will not happen for saturated defects. And finally, this is the last thing, the saturated objects are also very important. Why? Because they completely change cosmology, cosmological evolution of defects. Because normally what happens is that uh, defects, um, like monopoles, cosmic strings don't, with this, they, they appear as a result of phase transition. Okay, so here there is a phase transition, that first transition that forms monopole, and the second transition that forms cosmic strings that connect them. So you need phase transitions, but the saturated Objects, they can be formed directly by quantum transition from the thermal bath, from the radiation. You don't need phase transition for their formation. And that's another important implication. Okay, let me conclude briefly. Outlook, it's, a, it's an outlook, it's not a conclusion. Now, what we are observing is that black hole information properties, they are not specific to gravity. Um, they are universal. They come from this universal phenomenon of saturation. And this is great because this universal phenomenon now allows us to understand the microscopic mechanism, how black hole operates, and then to generalize this to other systems for information storage and processing. And we know how to build these systems, okay? There is a, a no, no mystery about how to build saturated systems of bosonic states, okay? And so, in this way, we can transfer this knowledge to to, to, to the labs, okay? And of course, saturation has other imp important implications, uh, both for fundamental physics and observations in cosmology and so on. So you can also invert the story, and you, from this you understand how important it is to think in terms of quantum information, but to think in the right way, not some kind of hand waving, to, about the fundamental, fundamental physics, okay? because you can then understand many things in a very different prism, okay? Uh, I'm finished. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot, very interesting talk, lots of input, but I would guess it's the best if we move the discussion to the coffee break <laughs> in interest of uh, keeping the time. Please, before you leave for the coffee break, there will be uh, one more announcement.